There's been a feud brewing between Daily Wire co-founder Ben Shapiro and one of his colleagues, Candace Owens, and boy, is it heating up. So as a refresher, Ben Shapiro has accused his Daily Wire colleague of being disgraceful for her stance on the war in Gaza. Now here's what Ben Shapiro said about Owens in that video. And then the question is about Candace Owens. I think her behavior during this has been disgraceful. on these particular issues has been ridiculous. It's not those sophistication, it's ridiculous. Everybody can see the moves that she's making and the things that she's saying and I find it disreputable. Wow, so Shapiro calls out Candace Owens and her thoughts on what's happening in Gaza is disgraceful, uh, refers to her faux sophistication. Now, prior to him saying that, uh, there were a few things that Candace Owens had said publicly that I assumed would rub Ben Shapiro the wrong way, like this tweet, no government anywhere has the right to commit a genocide ever. There is no justification for a genocide. I can't believe this even needs to be said or is even considered the least bit controversial to state. Now, as many of you know, there are some perspectives on what Israel is doing in Gaza. There is the issue of ethnic cleansing. Some see this as a genocide. Clearly, that is what Candace Owens is referring to here. And she also had a conversation with a Jewish comedian by the name of Ami Kozak on her show and said a few interesting things. Let's take a look. People are feeling like they can't even speak about this subject or they can't talk to a person like the way that you and I are, are speaking without being called mm -hmm. a Jew hater. And so it's kind of creating this weird situation where it actually it's furthering the problem to keep calling people Jew haters. It's furthering the problem to call people anti-Semitic. It would be more helpful to actually try to see where you connect and see how you're feeling because it humanizes things. It's like, listen, I'm not Jewish, so I don't feel as radically or as you know motivated as you do about the situation that's happening. I'm I am being selfish and American and saying I don't want a single dollar to go overseas because we've been in a bunch of useless wars and that might be upsetting right. to hear. But there's no anti-Semitism in my heart when I say it. It's just me being. Mm -hmm consistent in how I've always felt. And after that video of Ben Shapiro calling her stance on Israel disgraceful went public, she put out a pretty cryptic tweet and here's what it read. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. No one can serve two masters, either you will hate the one and love the other or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Wow. And by the way, <laughs> yeah, she, so she says that. it's. Cryptic, but I mean, everyone assumed that she was referring to Ben Shapiro there, right? Well, Ben Shapiro today responded, and here's what he said. Candace, if you feel that taking money from the Daily Wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means, quit. <laughs> by all means, quit is a great line though. <laughs> <laughs> by, by all means, no, seriously, no, you get, you got the right away. Go ahead. I'm, I'm gonna give you the path. Quit. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So she responded to that. She responded to that. You've been acting unprofessional and emotionally unhinged for weeks now. And we have all had to sit back and allow it and have all tried to exercise exceeding understanding for your raw emotion. But you cross a certain line when you come for scripture and read yourself into it, I will not tolerate it. She also said, you are utterly out of line for suggesting that I cannot quote biblical scripture. The Bible is not about you. <laughs> damn, damn. Look, I think, I think Ben Shapiro has had issues with Candace Owens for a while now. 
This is just my speculation. I think it's not just about her recent commentary about what's happening in Gaza. I mean, she's had a history of doing things that would upset Ben Shapiro, like providing cover for Kanye West when he had you know, a bit of an episode and went around saying disgusting, horrific, terrible anti-Semitic things. She participated in a congressional hearing where she appeared to provide some cover for Hitler. Like I, I was shocked that the Daily Wire even gave her a position within the company, but they did. And I was like, all right, I guess Ben Shapiro doesn't really care about anti-Semitic comments made publicly. I think that her more recent comments about what's happening in Gaza are not at all offensive, but that really turned Ben Shapiro off to the point where he felt the need to call her disgraceful in a public setting. And honestly, I think that that was beneath him. I think if he has a problem with what she has to say, he should talk to her privately rather than trash her publicly. Um, So I just think that there's like bad behavior all around here, but I am curious what you think, Waz. I just think it's become increasingly impossible to have ideological consistency and consider yourself a right winger in 2023. Uh, There's just no through line of logic or ideology in any of the you know ideas that these people espouse, um, Candace Owens just being like, "Look, uh, <laughs> I'm consistent on war. I'm consistent on isolationism um, as far as what I think American foreign policy should be." You can't do that. Like consistency on anything cannot exist. Like uh, the, my favorite example right now mm-hmm. is the right wing and the FBI. The idea that you're a right winger and you're anti federal police that like that that just doesn't make any sense. You can't be against the cops. In this case, the FBI, the feds and be right wing. But here we are today. If you go to a Trump rally, Mm -hmm. you will hear people saying we got to defund the FBI, which is essentially in line with defund the police people like To me, this is just what this speaks to. Like, you cannot be consistent in anything and be a modern right winger. It's just not going to work for you. So you do have some people saying we should be isolationists. But then if you're a traditional stand, um, excuse, establishment person in the GOP, you want to fund wars from now until forever. You want to feed the military industrial complex from now until Timbuktu. Or but from here till to back buck two. Mm-hmm. I, I'm mixing up my metaphors. It's okay. Anna, I'll, I'll you get the both. point. I'll accept both. No, but but okay, Waz. I'm gonna. I know people hate it when you do the whole both sides thing, but come on, how could you not? Okay, you, you talk about yeah. the lack of consistency on the right. Let's just briefly talk about the lack of consistency on the left, and I'm not talking about leftists. I'm just talking about the broad left. Okay. Yeah. The same people, who incessantly talked about the brutal treatment of Uyghur Muslims in China, how they're being placed in concentration camps. This is unacceptable. Mm. By the way, one of the people who was constantly talking about that was our very own President Joe Biden. Mm. But now, when it comes to slaughtering children in the Gaza Strip, what, 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 what could they do? Israel has a right to defend themselves. They had to bomb that hospital. Because there might be Hamas militants in the tunnels underneath the hospital. What could they do? They had to kill the children. I just think it's all BS. I think everyone has their little pet project, their passion project, whatever it is, where all of their morals, all of their principles, all of their brain power goes out the window and their bias takes over and that's all that matters. I see that happening. With the broad left in regard to the need to provide cover for Israel and anything the far right government of Israel wants to do. But those same people can't then turn around and try to encourage us to engage in either a cold or hot war with another country over their human rights abuses. You get what I'm saying? I mean, absolutely. (laughs) Yes. I don't think our public discourse, in so much so as it even is a discourse, is designed for folks to have a consistent ideological through line. It's just pom pom waving yes. at this point. Yes. That's 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 what it's designed for. 
you know, because I think about there are certain people who are just so repulsed by Donald Trump. It's like the guy could literally say nothing that they could ever agree with. Where I'm just like, no, nah, like when he got on the debate stage and told Jeb Bush his brother didn't keep us safe. Yeah, no, like you can't just say not he did it after 9-11. No, he was the president when it happened. Totally. Didn't keep us safe. I was like, this guy's making some freaking sense. Now, when he's done any of the myriad of other things that he's done or said, obviously I disagreed with him, but I don't think it's impossible for Donald Trump to come up with something that I might agree with because he's not necessarily on my quote unquote team. Mm -hmm. And I think the problem with the way that we discuss what, what we even consider to be politics these days, um, it's so rooted in this pom pom waving hero worship nonsense, this yas queening. You know, I, I just remember when, when Kamala Harris became the vice president, just, you know, all of my bougie ass black friends and just the, the yas queening on the timeline. And I was just like, guys, you can't possibly care about this woman. There's just no way. But it's just like, no, she's on the team. So we're cheering for it and it's great. And so, yeah, I'm totally on board with you. Now, uh, some on the right are rallying behind Candace Owens. Charlie Kirk ha happens to be one of them. Mm, Charlie then, Kirk? Oh, Charlie, no. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'm genuinely confused why asking questions and quoting Bible verses about peace warrants a call to resign from the Daily Wire. There should be more room in the conservative movement for disagreement. We can do better than this. And guess hmm. what? Even Tucker Carlson brought Candace Owens on to talk to her about all of this. We're gonna save that part of the story for our members. So if you're a member, <laughs> check that out in our bonus episode, members only. You can become a member by clicking on that join button if you're watching us on YouTube, or you can go to tyt.com slash join to become a member. Not only will you get to watch that portion of our coverage, but you get all sorts of perks and exclusive members only content, and you help to support the show and keep us afloat and free of corporate sponsors and corporate influence, which is my favorite part of membership. So thank Thank you to everyone who is a member and please consider becoming a member if you're not. I'm gonna read just a few more comments before we wrap up the show. Mark Moore says, Candace is having an existential crisis. Honestly, Mark, same. <laughs> like I'm at that period of my life, so I, I definitely get it. Uh, Cassandra G says, waiting to hear who will step up and move to censure Mullen for promoting violence and hateful rhetoric on the Senate floor and multiple media outlets. Um, I'm gonna venture to say no one. Apparently, uh, censure is only saved for people who have enough of a morality and enough principles to speak out against the brutal acts carried out by the IDF in the Gaza Strip. With that said, uh, that does it for our main show today. Uh, go over on to our members only bonus episode and uh, we'll see you there, tyt.com slash join. Thanks for watching, if you become a member, you get to watch all this ad free, except for of course, this ad. Still, hit the join button below. <laughs>